The symbolism of the bear and the Ursa constellations. Why is the bear such an important symbol, both in the past and now? We use bears in everyday expressions, such as like a bear with a sore head, meaning bad-tempered and irritable. Bears are used as a symbol in finance. A bear market is one experiencing a prolonged price decline. In contrast, a bull market is when prices are rising. But from what is essentially negative symbolism, we also find the teddy bear, which is entirely positive. The teddy bear was named after President Theodore Roosevelt when he refused to shoot a bear that had been captured. The incident was reported in the Washington Post on November the 16th, 1902. The initial cartoon was of an adult black bear, but later issues of the cartoon made the bear smaller and more cub-like. Morris Michtam saw the Berryman drawing and was inspired to create a teddy bear. The toys were an immediate success. But they never looked angry or dangerous, even when they were almost bear size. It seems that Richard Steef also had the idea for a toy based on baby bears in 1902 and the German Steef family firm produced them. As such, the symbolism does seem to have evolved differently. For example, this is the coat of arms of Veliki Novgorod, the largest city and administrative centre of Novgorod Oblast, Russia. It is one of the oldest cities in Russia, being first mentioned in the 9th century. And this painting shows a Russian bear hunt using dogs, where the bear is depicted as dangerous and aggressive. Whereas here, we see Fuzzy Bear, a Muppet puppet, best known for his ineffective stand-up comedy skills, rather than his downness. The bear is the dour aggressor. A bear is generally not a benign creature. It is large, strong, intelligent and resourceful. It has a superb sense of smell and is a good runner, climber and swimmer. Whether it is a Kodiak bear in Alaska, which commonly reaches sizes of 300 to 600 kilograms, or 660 to 1,320 pounds, and has even been known to exceed a weight of 680 kilograms, 1,500 pounds, or a polar bear, Ursus maritimus, described as the largest extant bear species, as well as the largest extant land carnivore. An adult male can weigh around 350 to 700 kilograms or 770 to 1540 pounds or a giant panda which can weigh up to 160 kilograms or 350 pounds although this is a cub or the North American grizzly or grizzly bear which naturalist George Ord formally classified in 1815 as Ursus horribilis for its character, though not the koala bear in Australia, which, despite its name, is classified as a marsupial, not a bear. All are big and strong, 
with ferocious non-retractable claws used for digging, climbing, tearing and catching prey. One swing of a large bear's paw can kill a human and they would be justified in fighting back. Given what humans have done to their home and how humans have treated bears, they have been hunted since prehistoric times for their meat, fur and sport. Used for bear baiting, the Quaker Member of Parliament, Joseph Pease, shown, via the Cruel to Animals Act of 1835, finally succeeded in banning bear baiting and dog and cock fighting in the UK and Empire. Although bear baiting occurs in Pakistan in this century, even though it is against the law. Forced to dance, used in forms of entertainment such as being made to dance, used in traditional Chinese medicine and the illegal trade in bear parts, including the Asian bile bear market. The International Union for Conservation of Nature, IUCN, lists six bear species as vulnerable or endangered. The poaching and international trade of the threatened populations are prohibited, but still ongoing. Indeed, every reason for the bear to be symbolically very angry and very irritable and very aggressive, making the jolly teddy look a nonsense. Cuddly bear versus ferocious bear. Thus, from what we can deduce so far, the cuddly teddy bear is an anomaly. Whilst Paddington Bear and Pooh Bear get to meet the Queen and even offer her marmalade sandwiches and birthday cards, the Bodleian Library has cartoons labelled A Russian Hug for the Young Emperor, dating back to the 1800s. And whilst Smoky Bear is used to promote campaigns against careless use of fires in forests, the Sunday Times in a cartoon dating back to an era when sabres were used, characterised the nature of the bear as one of danger. And even more recently, as we were entertained by the shambling good humour of Baloo the Bear in the Disney Jungle Book cartoon, some cartoonists were pointing out that trying to be civilised with a bear with an appetite for entire countries, and this is a bummer, in 2014 may not be a sensible strategy and equating the antics of Yogi Bear and Boo Boo with a fully armoured bear being ridden by an ex-KGB agent may not really be comparing like with like and this is President Bush and that brave bear with his cudgel may be closer to the symbolism of the sort of bear we are faced with today. And that the UK is as guilty as the US in sanitising the true nature of the bear. Pooh, Paddington and Rupert Bear all offer a form of wise spiritual escapism for a world all too horrific for most to want to believe. So the symbolism of the bear as a benign, cuddly creature is incorrect, and we might be better considering this symbolism to be that of a teddy. But we may be wrong about the Russian bear too. To begin with, the bear is not a symbol of Russia, and has never been one, at least officially. The official symbol of Russia today is a double-headed eagle. But for at least five centuries, those outside Russia have been using the bear. Part of the problem may simply have been caused by unscrupulous merchants promoting Russian bear grease as the best remedy for hair loss, on the grounds that bears are very hairy, and bear's grease was actually pig fat. 
Eventually, Russians became tired of trying to resist it. At some point, it just became easier to sigh and accept this misunderstanding. Even go with it. This is fake. But Russia is not a symbolic bear. It is a double-headed eagle, matching, in some respects, the eagle of the USA. So after all this, we should be left wondering what the bear actually represents. It isn't Russia, because Russia is a double-headed eagle. It isn't a benign, fluffy, harmless being, because that is a fiction created for children. It isn't even a bad-tempered, irritable, aggressive being, because bears are only this when ill-treated by humans. And to find out its real meaning, we must turn first to the Picts. The Picts In many northern countries in ages past, the bear, like the wolf, was greatly admired. Like the stag and the wild horse, it was a totem animal, a clan animal, and can be found in numerous Pictish carvings. Many ancient stones in Scotland are carved with bears, and they are remarkably accurately observed with their strong haunches and massive claws. These are not cuddly toy bears, but real bears, and admired enough to be worthy of being carved very artistically in stone. Bears were not just native to Scotland. In Cherry Gorge, near Bristol, the remains of animal species native to mainland Europe, such as antelopes, brown bears and wild horses, have been found alongside a human skeleton, Cheddar Man, dated to about 7,150 BC. And why was the bear such an important totem group? The answer lies in the constellations, Ursa Major and Ursa Minor. And we will look at this now. The Ursa Major and Ursa Minor constellations. The Ursa Major constellation lies in the northern sky. Its name means the Great Bear in Latin. It has seven main stars. The Ursa Minor constellation is known as the Small Bear. It lies near Draco in the northern sky. It too is formed of seven large stars, one of which is Polaris. Ursa Major is known as the Big Dipper, or the Wagon, or the Wain, meaning a cart, or the Plough, and has a very recognisable panhandle pattern. The stars on the right side of the pan line up with Polaris, as shown on the flag of Alaska. Ursa Major is the largest northern constellation in the sky and doesn't dip below the horizon. This Van Gogh painting shows just how big it is. The constellation is symbolically linked to King Arthur. Vice Admiral W. H. Smythe, shown here, wrote in his Speculum Hartwellianum a cycle of celestial objects continued at the Hartwell Observatory to 1869. King Arthur, the renowned hero of the Mabinogion, typified the Great Bear, as his name, Arth, Bear, and Uthar, wonderful, implies in the Welsh language. And the constellation visibly describing a circle in the north polar regions of the sky may possibly have been the true origin of the Son of Pendragon's famous round table. The two constellations Ursa Major and Ursa Minor together point to Polaris, the North Star. 
It was thus invaluable as a navigation aid in the days before compasses, especially as it is the brightest star in the constellation. Because Polaris lies nearly in a direct line with the Earth's rotational axis above the North Pole, the North Celestial Pole, Polaris stands almost motionless in the sky, making it easy to find. A red sandstone carving in St Andrew's Church, Dega, Cumbria, shows a bear chained to a pillar. It is called the Dega Bear and is one of four. One hypothesis on the meaning of this statue, which long predates the church, is that it is the bear climbing the celestial pole, going up the pole in the outward court, climbing further up the pole and the inward court, up through the stars and the zodiac, until it has reached the unmoving mover at the centre of the cosmic egg, which is symbolically Polaris, the North Star. And we came across this idea of ascent up a pole to the centre in Alistair Crowley's tarot card for the world, in his case called the universe. Furthermore, in Sir Philip Pullman's trilogy, his dark materials, Lyra Balakwa befriends Ayoric Bernison, a bear. After Lyra helps him recover his armour, he becomes very protective of her and joins the expedition to the North. As such, Sir Philip's book also draws on the same symbolism. The bear can guide you to being in pole position. In the northern branches of the Indo-European languages, the constellations are known as the Honey Eaters. Now a video on the symbolism of bees, beehives and honey explains why. They figuratively climb directly upwards to spiritually ascend and by doing so reach the centre, the source of spiritual nourishment, honey all indicating that Paddington, and especially Pooh Bear, are indeed closer to the symbolism intended. <laughs>